How many of you can see that? Can you see that this time? All right, I made the letters big enough where you can see it. And this way you know I'm not lying to you. If you don't have your Bible, you can read it right off of there. So, Okay, let's do this. I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew 24 to start. No, no, I don't either. I want you to open your Bibles to start in the 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, forgive me, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I want to read to you. Uh, no, I was wrong. It is 1 Thessalonians, but it's chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I'm going to start right at the uh, right at the very beginning. And I'm going to read to you just a little ways there. Okay? And I, uh, I want to say a few things just to kind of finish this off today. And uh, uh, be done with it, hopefully. We'll see. Chapter 5, verse 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. It says, But this, uh, but concerning this, it says, But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly the day of the Lord, so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as the travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are children of the light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that, that, they that be drunk are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to, uh, to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, now you can back up and, and hang out there in Matthew 24 for a minute because I want to say a few things. And, and, and I, want to, I want to make a comment or two before we get into this very far. But uh, I read that because I want, to just, I want to make a comment on that in a minute here. First of all, I want people to understand something. You know, I, I've, uh, I'm sure that people accuse me and say, well, you know, you do everything in your power to take my rapture. I do not do everything in my power. If I could, if I could find a rapture in the Bible, I would be thrilled to pieces. Nobody in their right mind would say anything less than, man, I don't want to have to endure what may come. I don't want to endure what may come. Nobody would want to. But, you know, the problem is this is the key and this is the problem that I have is uh, if I can't find what I'm looking for, I would be lying to you. And I don't want to lie to you, okay? And, and you know, you, you listen, I've come to the conclusion people believe what they want to believe, and that's, that's their business. They're going to do what they got to do, and they're going to believe what they want to believe. But I want to take you on a little trip through the, the Scriptures this morning just to kind of finish this off. Everybody last week remembers that uh, God does everything in a pattern. He does things in a pattern. And you know what? I promise you, it, it's, it's obvious to me that God does everything that He does, and He will do it by a pattern, and He will keep His Word. How many of you don't believe that Jesus will keep His Word? He will do according to His Word. You know, there's some people, they say, well, I have faith. Let me explain to you some things about faith. Faith works as long as it's within the confines of the Word of God. Anything outside the Word, faith won't work. It, I mean, you can say, well, I believe God. No, if it's not what the Bible says... God can't go against His own Word. He will not. He cannot. It's just not His nature. He's, the Bible says He's magnified His Word above His name. And that means that His name is only as good as His Word, and therefore He cannot change what He said. What He said, He said, and that's the way it's going to be. Now, I read to you out of, uh, out of Hebrews 9.28, the Bible says that the first time He came, and he, uh, he took away the sin of the world. The second time He comes, the Bible says He's coming without sin unto salvation, right? And I wanted you to hear that, and I want you to understand something. The other the other day, uh, the Bible says in the, book, in the book of Acts, the first chapter of the book of Acts, um, let, me, let me just show you something there. You don't even have to turn over here, but I want to just show you something. This was fantastic as I was thinking about this, and I haven't had the Lord come and just pop something in my brain like He did the other day, but watch this. The Bible says this in verse, I'm going to just start down there in verse, uh, oh, let me see. Um... Um, I don't know where to start. Let me start in verse ten. And while they looked, uh, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in the white apparel, 
which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you in, into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is, in, which is from Jerusalem about a Sabbath day's journey. Now, you know, it's odd to me. I don't know why I never read the rest of that verse. But it's odd to me. I, I begin to think about that. The Bible says that Jesus is coming. He's going to come in like manner. And I thought to myself, well, now this is going to be interesting. I wonder where he left from. Guess where he left from? He left from the Mount of Olives. Did you know what he said? He said he's coming back where? The Bible says in Zechariah, he's going to put his feet on the Mount of Olives. And the thing is going to cleave down the middle. It's going to split open. I went to the internet and I looked at the Mount of Olives. And I've never, I've never been there. I've never looked at this. But you know, it's a big mountain. It's a big, pretty big mountain. And there's a lot of housing on it. There's, it's a beautiful place in Jerusalem there. And I guarantee you, you know, if you had a GPS and you could mark where his footsteps left from, that's where he's going to come back to. Watch. And I, I asked, you know, I was just clicking along the other day and I was doing my thing and all of a sudden this question popped into my head. Well, where did he leave from? Because that's interesting and that's important. And I went and I read and, and my, matter of fact, Cody, I called him back, Cody, your son the other day. I called him back. He called me and I've been in Prescott that day to get Maddie. And he called me that, that afternoon and I was gone. So I called him that evening and I said, Cody, you know, the Lord asked me a question the other day. I said, I've been reading the book of Acts where the Bible talks about Jesus leaving. I said, I wonder where he left from. He goes, well, you know, that's an interesting question, but I think he left from the Mount of Olives. So I thought, well, I'm going to go to the Bible immediately and I'm going to find out. And sure enough, the Bible says they departed from the Mount of Olives and they went back. It's about a Sabbath day's journey from Jerusalem, back, or from Mount Olives back to, the, to uh, Jerusalem. I just wanted to show you that the Bible says he's coming back in the same way he left. And I promise you he will put his feet on the Mount of Olives when he shows up. You know what? How many of you believe the Bible? Do you believe the Bible is written to you and to me? It's written, did you know the Bible is written to us? Those who believe. Everybody say those who believe. Those who believe. The Bible wasn't written to everybody because everybody read, reads the Bible, let alone believes it. It's written to those who believe. I believe the Bible. And you know what? It's interesting to me. You know, people just, they, they say this and that and the other about what the Bible says. But have you noticed that it's being fulfilled to the letter? And, and they're saying, oh, this, this Bible thing, it's not real. This, it's being fulfilled to the letter. Everything that God said concerning this world, it's coming to pass. It's coming to pass to a T. And people say, oh, this Bible thing and this Christianity, this is a bunch of hogwash. It's nothing to it. I'm telling you something. The Bible says and there's coming a day, and I can read it for you. The Bible says there's coming a day when the men that are in this planet, they're, 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 they're going to be going, my God, he's pouring out his wrath. And they're going to recognize that there is a mighty God in control. Do you believe God's in control? Man, I believe He's in control. I, I was laughing the other day as I was reading through this. I'm saying, man, this is so fantastic. I, I'm so glad I'm alive in these days. I'm so glad that I get to see some of this. I even told the Lord, I said, Lord, I want to survive and I want to live right up through the very end of the days. I want to see what you're doing. Let me explain to you something. I say that to say this. You know, as I read through the Scripture, you know, the earth is going to be bereaved of billions of people. Billions of people will die. You're just looking at me. But it's the truth. The Bible says one third of the population will die. The first time. One third figured out that's a lot of people just in the one act. He says in a lot of different places, a lot of the people on the planet. But how many of you believe God's bigger than death? Death. 